meeting for March 5th. Um, I need a motion to approve the um, minutes of the prior meeting. Mr. Kenny, Mr. Banslow, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. I'm going to move right into Kate for her resolutions. Okay. Uh, as normal, Peter and Tanya and I are going to update you on some um, ongoing promotions and things that we're looking forward to doing, uh, as well as a presentation from Ed Workshop and Josiah Brown from New York Welcome View and Christina. So we're going to get moving along. I have one resolution request, um, and you all should have a copy of that. I think you all know that our email list of 130,000 subscribers are, is our most important list, and we communicate with them at least 15 times a year. Um, we create those blasts, and we distribute them through our IT department. There are some constrictions to the way it's been moving along, and Peter and I, or Peter actually did the research, and we're looking for some new software, and we have a great recommendation, so Peter could um, tell us a little bit more about that. Before you get going, though, we have come in under budget on two projects, so we have the funds to purchase it. Okay. So currently we run our blasts uh, for the past five years, at least since I've been here, uh, through a combination of uh, tourism, creating the <coughs> content and the look, and then sending it over to IT, who then has a, 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 a coder program it all together. Um, a gentleman puts together the list, and then a, a third worker uh, manages the sense. So we're looking at a total of three staff members from IT, as well as um, our efforts on the tourism department. And it goes very well, but recently with phones, tablets, things like that, um, our blasts aren't always compatible throughout all platforms. So you could open our blast on a desktop, but it might not work on your iPhone. And since uh, the trend is continuing for more people interacting on their phone rather than their desktop, uh, we see it as a necessity to move forward to uh, blast software that kind of alleviates all that. This is a, you know, these companies are dedicated to making sure that your content is delivered on all platforms. Um, so what I did is a uh, quick query of the top 10 email blast softwares. I sent bid requests out to the top five, and I heard back from three. Uh, the three that came in was benchmark email. I think they were uh, listed number two. Eye contact was number one, and vertical response was right at number four. Uh, I then signed up to do a test uh, on each of the software, and I found that I actually preferred the number two vendor, um, this, and this is why they're processing the quotes. Benchmark was, was the easiest for me to work on, and I thought that the system was pretty nice. Uh, virtual response was also a very nice one, and uh, eye contact was a little bit clunky, but I did like all three of them. Uh, so anyways, the numbers came back, and the benchmark was the lowest. It came in at, uh, I think the numbers are here, a little under 4,000, um, and it gives us the most cents per year. So how they bill you is uh, they give you 250,000 cents per month, so we can email up to that amount um, each month, and some of our months have uh, two blasts that go out, and some of them have one blast, so we can kind of bank our lower months and save those numbers for higher months. Is that right? clear on all this? Okay. Uh, so anyway, some of the benefits of this email software is it's compatible with phones, desktop. I mean, they have, this, this is a company is built on making sure this thing works. Um, it removes the size constraints. Currently, our blast can only be so tall, uh, so we have to cut content sometimes. Um, and what this has the added effect of is we can add more content, but we can also add more sponsors. Currently, we're limited to three sponsors per month. Um, so, and recently, the, our, our blast pro program is full of sponsors. We had to actually cut out two sponsors uh, this year, people that were interested in partaking in some of these blasts, but they couldn't. So um, this would allow us to include more of them. Uh, we become less reliant on IT staff, and I want to make sure that IT staff has done a great job, but keeping up with the industry is just a hard task to, for them to do. Now we no longer, and, and we would in the past require uh, all three of those people to kind of be in the office in order for this blast to go out. Now it can just be run from tourism office and sent out. And um, one of the best benefits of this is um, we have better reporting and list management. So um, in the past we can see, and you've seen the statistics I've, I've shown during these committee meetings, you can see how many are sent, opens, click-throughs, uh, bounce rate, things like that. But now we can actually see who's opening our blast and who's clicking on run. So we would see that Mr. Conover opened the fishing blast and click on fishing derbies. Uh, we would know that about you. We can start putting you in segregated lists and know that you are an outdoorsman and that you're interested in fishing. And 
and let's keep that in mind for future blasts. Uh, we can tell that certain people are, are not opening blasts, and after a certain period of time, if we sent them a year's worth of email and they haven't opened one, we can get rid of them and start calling our list so it's a really effective way of managing the list. Dr. Ann, would you like to fast start this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a yeah, I, I'll put my two cents in. It's, uh, you know, because IT does a great job for us. It's not that we want to take the work away from them. We do pay IT for the work that they do for tourism, so it, it'll be one less uh, some money going back into this kind of a, a, a system for us to use. It'll be convenient to get things done in, in days instead of two or three weeks sometimes, and, and I think to keep up with the technology, and it just amazes me when I go in and talk to Peter. He just talks right over my head but it sounds good but uh, I'm not I'm from the old school I don't that's, that's that not stuff. very high but <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a resolution to move this law okay Mr. Dickinson <coughs> will I get a second Mr. Kenny any other questions on it I think you'll you'll be impressed in a few months when, when we get this rolling all right all in favor aye opposed it's passed thank you thank you <coughs> All right, next we have one more action item, and you all have a copy of a scope of services for a proposed digital slash social media manager. Um, we all know that the social media strategies are changing by the minute, and as a department, we need to stay current. Um, we have been doing Facebook and Twitter, but we really feel a need to expand that and reach into some new, uh, new um, strategies. So we discussed it among ourselves with um, our chairman and Peter, we also talked to purchasing and civil service about creating such a position. Instead, we'd like to go with a contract. You see a scope of services. Um, Peter can talk a little bit more about what we're looking for. And um, we would like approval ultimately to go ahead and do a search and selection of someone to work contractually with us. So fast talking rounds two here. Um, <coughs> right now, we currently manage uh, Facebook is probably the most one we rely on. Um, but it's just a uh, we do it through a series of kind of people internally managing it when they get a chance in between projects. Um, we've expanded into Twitter, uh, but what we'd like to do is really get someone that's dedicated to this um, agency or a person that comes in and is out and about at the uh, county events, um, actually partaking in these events and taking pictures and, and posting those live action event type things saying, hey, this is great, come get here. Um, creating a conversation with our uh, hopefully growing list of uh, users and <coughs> um, just creating content for our site, you know, writing stories about a you know, little trip that they did that involved um, you know, a brew tour or um, dining or things like that uh, and posting that on our site. And what would those would help with is um, a growing our social media uh, footprint, you know, get more likes. Uh, more users, which translates to more traffic to our website, and we'll point that. Um, we're hoping that um, content created by this person or agency uh, would be hosted directly on our website, so these articles would be crawled by search engines. Um, and since they would be rather specific things, um, talking about Thurman Maple Days or something like that, when the website search engine crawls that, they're going to pull up uh, very detailed um, words on maple sugaring and hopefully give us a higher search presence, not just for Lake George, New York, but when someone types in uh, New York maple syrup. Uh, hey, here's an article that pulls up for Lake George area, Warren County Tourism. Go to the site and you can read all about this um, wonderful Maple Days experience and then use and then use the remaining parts of our site to, to see what kind of events are going on if they're going to uh, you know, maple production. So that would be um, what we're looking to do is have someone that's out there dedicated to this uh, interacting with these events and people and then we, as an office, could still supplement that by um, you know, plugging away a few posts here and there um, while we do our other work. Well, what was your decision between hiring someone and hiring the company? Okay. So, great question. Uh, when we first thought of this, we thought, hey, it would be great to have someone in office um, dedicated to this full time and go out and about and kind of uh, do what we feel is best. But we don't really know the whole scope of services um, because what we're, we're not entirely familiar with this. We would like to see maybe an agency or a person that's dedicated to this type of stuff come in on a contract and 
offer us recommendations, see how they go for a year or two, and then we can have a better understanding of what we can expect out of a full-time person, what the, the actual you know, mini-group <coughs> details of this job positioning are. So it gives us a little bit more flexibility and a lot more accuracy when we, if, if and when we do uh, proceed to push this to a full-time position. So not sure how that would, would evolve. Uh, maybe this works contract works good on its own in the beginning. Uh, maybe it does evolve into something bigger and better. Uh, but I think we definitely have a lot more input to make better decisions. Good question, good answer. Um, and also, it, it, it will help us, you know, it with a contract, we don't have to have a full-time employee and benefits and all that. And we have enough money, I, we think, um, in Kate's budget to cover this. Uh, if it doesn't come back, with too astronomical of a price, <laughs> so we wouldn't be back here asking for any, any more funds, I hope, but we, we do have to put it out and see what we get, and um, it, it's, it's something that I think we, again, in the technology industry, we have to catch up with, so. I will make that motion. You'll make that motion? Thank you. And Mr. Vanslow, second. Any other questions? Mr. Just, uh, I, I assume we're going to be doing this, uh, I, it's fair to say, on a trial basis. Uh, in other words, One that uh, the, and whoever comes in uh, to do this work uh, understands that uh, we're going to be evaluating it here and we're going to be making decisions going forward. Uh, that Certainly. way we, we may find a better way uh, to do this. Uh, we may have input that allows us to think of a better way, a more efficient way to do this. And I would hate to think that we brought somebody in that was, you know, whose family income was dependent on keeping this, keeping this spot for a for the, for term beyond what we are authorizing here today. Um, well, that would be my only concern. Were you Googling? Me? What's that? Were you Googling? <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Thank you. Move on to Just moving the along. Um, annually, our department puts together a year in review binder, and I think you've all seen it before. We, we only make three of them now. I keep two in the office. The Board of Supervisors has one. But if you'd like to take a peek through this, it's got our, a lot of our stats that we've collected through the year. A lot of our creative work is in there. Um, just all sorts of different figures that uh, really comprise what we do all year long, number of visitors, et cetera. So if you want to take a peek, it's here. If you want to borrow it, that's fine. Um, and that's one passed around. Uh, we also recently conducted our uh, occupancy survey of area lodging, camping, and attractions to collect 2014 figures. We do this uh, in cooperation with our planning department. Uh, this year, and we do it every other year now, this year as an incentive to our lodging properties, we offered a um, free one-third page four-color ad, and the winner of that is Riding High Ranch. They'll receive that ad. It'll be in our 2016 travel guide. Um, we had a couple of late responses that come in, so we haven't tabulated the results yet. And when we do, I'll share it with you the next time we meet, and we'll also go into this binder. Next, um, we were invited to attend a new show, for us actually, an escape maker show in Brooklyn, Food and Travel Expo. Because we're members of the New York State Travel and Industry Association, we were offered this free opportunity. So Tanya and I are going to go down there. Um, an exhibit in May, I think it's uh, May 2nd. I Love New York, Taste New York, and Amtrak are the sponsors. And it's going to give us the opportunity to focus on our close drive time to New York and also on our emerging locally grown and produced um, assets. So uh, we're going to reach out to our cheese farm and breweries, etc., to have some samples and um, some of their literature with us. The Washington County and Saratoga County are going to be by our side. Uh, <coughs> next, we have a newsletter that just went out. You all received it. Um, you know, our goal is to update the tourism community and our e recent and upcoming events, or programs, rather. So that went out to 1,118 email addresses. And the most clicked items were the uh, 2015 Occupancy Tax Award and um, our web stats, 2014 web stats, and our new photos and videos. This was the largest newsletter that we have ever created. We probably wouldn't use our new software on our newsletter, we, we, we figure either. Just on uh, the blast and. Yeah, it just still has IT looking for us. Mm -hmm. 
public relations reports. You have copies for January and February from Joanne. On the screen are a couple of mentions of where we've had some um, exposure. And, you know, we, we have an in-house um, opportunity to, to promote our different assets, but we also work closely with I Love New York's PR firm and our Adirondack Regional PR firm to get um, a lot more exposure. You know, we produce this um, accessible brochure annually. Sue in my office updates it. And this year, before she was updating, or rather in 2014, she was contacted by Dr. Anderson of SUNY Cortland, who first of all said, I got a hold of this little piece that your department does, and it's outstanding that you do this. And she offered some insight and corrected us on some of our language. So you have a little explanation there, so I really don't need to go over it. But um, this is available for download on our website and or by mail. And also at the consumer shows, it's nice when someone sees this and they really appreciate that we've highlighted and pointed out some of our properties that are accessible. And that's not just for wheelchairs, it's for hearing and visually impaired as well. Uh, okay. And last week I was contacted by I Love New York. They had done a um, mailing to retail throughout the state. They're partnering, partnering with um, the Retail Council, and they're coming up with a Canadian program of coupons for March 15th to 31. So they've asked participating, the best retail stores to participate by creating a coupon, and the campaign will be in Toronto and Montreal, it'll be television and digital. Um, so we reinforced that message and sent this out to our properties as well. The uh, promotion will be forthcoming, and um, I quote from the solicitation, the state says, statistics show that more than 75% of Canadians surveyed indicate shopping as their top activity when traveling to New York. Our goal is to increase awareness of New York State as a great shopping destination for Canadian citizens. So later on in Tom's presentation, he's going to discuss some of the um, efforts that we do in Canada for shopping. And then next, uh, we have this Sunday, the Governor's Winter Challenge in Lake Placid. I don't know if any of the supervisors will be there. Last year, Supervisor Monroe was there. Um, it's a great chance for our legislators to show off the Adirondacks to their, their partners, and <coughs> it kind of is combined with the Governor's Adirondack Challenge in the summer of rafting. So they love to come up here and it'll be this Sunday in Lake Placid, and there's tons of activities that people can select to do. And next, uh, at our last committee meeting, Supervisor Conover requested that the Tourism of the Department meet with the Chamber to discuss Canadian promotions and who's doing what and where. So you have a spreadsheet. It's also on the screen. Michael and I sat down, and Tanya and, um, just put together where our efforts are. What is not on here is that most recent Isle of New York effort for the end of March, but you know, television, print, electronic, shows, media marketplaces, there's quite a bit happening. And then we were also asked to create a little survey form for the Outlet Center to ask people, are we helping you? And we immediately did that. There's a little slip of paper up there, um, and there have not been any responses. But they're available. Um, so I would just like to keep moving along. And we have Josiah Brown here with us from New York Welcomes You. And I could give him a great intro, but Josiah has got a great program to show. I'm just going to let you start, Josiah. Okay, well, thank you all for giving me a couple of minutes. I'm going to just keep this short. And when I... But I have to keep something short, I get going very fast. So if you have a question, just stop me, throw something at me. Um, uh, I am uh, Josiah Brown from New York Welcomes You. I'm the President and CEO of New York Welcomes You. Um, I like to say during the week, and on the weekend I'm the New York Sherpa, uh, where I travel around, I talk to about 10,000 people myself per year in this program. Uh, it was a nickname that was given to me and I've kind of been running with it. Um, I've been involved in New York tourism for now 12 years exclusively on uh, New York tourism, and I've done over 500,000 miles on the road, been to every corner of New York about 10 times. Um, and that's kind of how that nickname moves. So 
What uh, I had a vision about three years ago to take some of the knowledge to the public personally because I was constantly recommending stuff to do in New York. And I found whenever I was outside of our borders, even a short distance, I'd say I was from New York and people would say, oh, I love New York City. And then I'd get into that whole, no, upstate, do you know where, do you know where, I'm from the Hudson Valley myself. So I had a vision that was based on my belief in tourism promotion. And that is, I have two core beliefs that have been crafted as I've traveled along. And that is, number one, that people make a travel decision first by personal interest. That personal interest may be going to see a tourism destination, but it's very often what you like to do, hiking or fishing, or you want to do something with your family, you want to do something with your kids, you want to go away with your husband or your wife. So a personal interest is the driver of a tourism decision. And then the other thing that I found is that recommendations, they tear down the wall of fear of trying something new. And that's a huge challenge for New York because upstate, you know, north of Westchester, northern New York, western New York, all these different regions are so unknown by those downstate. A recommendation can be the bridge of them risking a weekend or a week or their very finite money resources to travel to actually go do something. So I said, can I launch a program on that? And the, what was born was the New York's Best Experiences Tour, where what we decided to do was literally go right out to the public on a traveling recommendation tour where we would set up and say, what kind of traveler are you? And as people answered that question, we'd say, you know where a great place to do that is? And then we would give them some ideas. And we used what we call the rule of five, which is if you give people less than five strong reasons to go somewhere, they usually, I watch it, their body language stays like this, they don't open up. And as soon as you hit that fourth or fifth, they start saying, really, there's a, a Six Flags and the Lake and the downtown, like, oh, okay. But if you go over five too far, you start inundating them, and then they start, you start to lose them again. So that was what we launched. We called it a mobile visitor center. Um, we launched in October of 2013, and Kate was an earlier supporter of this, recognizing the power of recommendations and the power of traveling with a, a travel guide that we would make notes in. Um, you also have a real advantage here is that I work with a tremendous amount of counties across the state, and in many of them, I have to call it such and such county on the tour. Being able to say the Lake George area has been incredibly powerful because it's more logical to how people think. Um, so that's what we do. So this is <coughs> this is the uh, New York Sherpa Mobile. This is the truck I get to drive around. Um, and Lake George is on my driver door. So all summer when I'm driving around with my elbow out the window, <laughs> I get to think about, I see Lake George in my rear view mirror all the time, 365 days a year. Um, so that's actually taken on Jones Beach. This is, uh, just to give you a quick snapshot of what it looks like, it takes a different form everywhere we set up, but this is our booth at the Northeast RV Show, and we have it set up a little um, stack psychologically, where the largest message coming from our booth as people walk up to it are these personal interests at the top. We change these banners depending on the show that we're at. So it says rafting, fishing, paddling, hiking, biking. It says the things they like to do. And they come in and say, well, where do you do that? And they point at these banners. And then on the tables, you can see we have these displays. And we use these displays to editorialize 12 destinations. Um, that's a full uh, panorama of the booth there. And below the display is the travel guide. So this is, uh, on the left is the, the board that we used last year. Again, we're kind of trying to stick to that rule of five. On the right is the board that we used this year. And this is what we say is one of New York's best experiences. Lake George is one of New York's best experiences. Let us tell you a little bit about it. Up top, it's uh, hashtag making New York memories, which is going to be a, uh, a social media contest we're going to launch this summer to engage the public. Um, so we use these boards, and we use their interest Oh, you like to hike. Have you ever been to Lake George? Let me, and then we open up the guide and we circle a couple of things and we try to give them a place that they can do their personal interest. One of my visions for this tour was not to just to go to travel shows, which we do go to the travel shows and things like that, but to get to some incredibly tactical locations. I Love New York caught wind of what we were doing and has helped leverage us into some events that are hard to get into as long as we activate it under their tents. So this was the Jones Beach Air Show. Oh, we saw 330,000 people over the course of two days. I didn't personally talk to all of them, but I felt like by the end of the weekend I had talked to half of them. 
absolutely incredible demographic for Long Islanders, greater New York City, to talk to people about tourism for 12 hours a day. We had about 1,000 people on our team for an hour for 12 hours. Um, and of course, the truck got the shit right out of the footprint the whole time, and we got to see the New Angels too. Um, another cool one was the Baseball Hall of Fame induction. There is no vendors at the Baseball Hall of Fame induction. We got leveraged in there by Isle of New York. Uh, 55,000 people sitting on a lawn waiting for a program to start, and we had them as a captive audience and talked to them about tourism. The cool thing for you guys is that I talked to probably over 100 people who said they were, uh, based on the inductees coming from Atlanta and some of these different places, this was kind of their week in New York. And they said, well, we're headed for Vermont. And we said, well, what do you want to see in Vermont? Well, you know, the woods. And then we tell them the story of the Adirondack Park being the only park like it in the country. And we must have steered dozens and dozens of people up into the Adirondacks and Lake George instead of Vermont, which for me was very cool. Um, and then this is a, uh, a quick panoramic shot. That's why this person is cut in half. <laughs> um, this quick panoramic shot of the Warwick Apple Fest. Again, very high. Uh, these are the type of things we, we take. This is Orange and Rockland County in the edge of New Jersey. Very high demographic, income-wise. Uh, 35,000 people attend. Maybe had a place <coughs> right on the corner. We got rid of everything by like we brought twice the amount of information and got rid of it all by one o'clock. This was a cool moment because the 2014 Warwick Apple Fest was the first time we were at an event twice. And by 9:30, I think it was, a woman came into the booth and said, "I came into this booth last year, and you recommended Corning, and we took that little book and we went there for a week, and I want to know what's next." And like for me, that was the crowning moment to say, "It's working. This is taking." Uh, an effect here. Um, this is an event, and I've sent this to, uh, to Kate. These are the events that we went to, about 750,000 people in total as a gross at the events, and we learned a lot. We're stacking most of our events between January and June this year instead of pressing Christmas into the summer. Um, just to wrap up a couple of Lake George details, the travel guide is incredibly popular. It is the number one distributed guide in our booth. Um, there is name recognition for Lake George that is equal to Niagara Falls and Cooperstown, which is amazing. People know the name Lake George. It's very well branded. And we're in an age where a lot of things are shifting digital, but what we do with these travel shows and with these mobile activations, um, print is so demanding. People come in, they grab the travel guide, and they say, I have to always have the new one. I have to have this year's. So it really has a... Um, a very strong impact on people who watch that happen uh, in our booth. Um, one of the things that we see as a great advantage for Lake George is when I say Lake George, it equals the Adirondacks <coughs> to people. I say, have you ever been to Lake George? And they say, oh, the Adirondacks, we love the Adirondacks. There's a synonymous uh, marriage of the two names. I was there as a kid. It's a huge opportunity for Lake George because I talked to a, most of the people when like, I was in Long Island. They said, well, I was there as a kid. And then it was like dot, dot, dot. Like they had that's a great opportunity to recruit them back because they had this we love Lake George impression of their trip as a child. Um, and then the, um, the thing that we always encourage people, you know, obviously coming from a company that does tourism marketing, is that people are so hungry for authenticity and experiences. They want to buy experiences. They want to go do something with this finite time that they have to actually get away. And that's a, that's a thing that we can leverage and tell people why we're famous. This is something I talk about all the time. Give me a strong reason to come. And fishing, paddling, and hiking are the top three things that people ask us for recommendations about in our booth. So leverage those all day long. And then events as well. People are traveling around events more and more. I just keep hearing it again and again. But they kind of pick their trip around an event that they can go to and get out of that sense of security that they'll have something to do. Um, and then the last thing here is that I would encourage everybody to just try to take what our philosophy into your marketing in the sense that talk about personal interests in your marketing and um, make recommendations. Put itineraries on your website. Tell people what the top things to do are. If you're a hotel and you sell um, rooms, sell hiking because hiking will fill those rooms. Sell paddling because paddling will fill those rooms. And talk about them. Talk about what they like to do. And the last thing that I just kind of like to challenge is the, the phrase I don't like in tourism marketing is something for everyone yeah. in the sense that I want to know that it's the top place for my interest. And I feel like a lot of times we, um, certainly a county, has to show everything that they have, but for individual properties, 
tell me what you specialize in, tell me why you are better to go to than the next person. Um, because I think sometimes something for everyone kind of homogenizes us down a little bit. <coughs> the Adirondacks are an experience that is different than Niagara Falls, but different for incredible reasons. So um, that's what we're out doing, and I just want to thank I want to thank you for your support. Keith was an early supporter of the vision and of the project, and I've never been involved with anything that has worked this well. We really talk to people, we inspire them, and I'm now building a team, um, a team of people. I have two camping experts. I have a New York State hiking expert and a New York State fishing expert. I'm building this team that will be leveraging all of this knowledge into the website and also onto our tours. So thank you for your support. Thank you very much. Uh, Anybody great. have any questions for Josh? Uh, very good uh, presentation, Josh. No questions? All right, thank you. We'll move on. Um, uh, we'll go to Tanya. Wake up. <laughs> oh, that was very interesting, Josh. Um, I'm just going to touch on a few things, actually uh, three or four. So um, you can see on the screen that I do the uh, quarterly group loop. That went out in February, February 12th, and it went to about 3,200 um, recipients, email recipients. Um, may not be able to see on the screen, but um, I did a, a call out to the newly implemented parking fee permit as a, a balloon fest. Uh, I've been doing that for over a year because tour operators are still, some of them are, as I'm meeting them throughout the year, are still not aware that there is um, a fee now for the balloon fest. So I try to get that out on a quarterly basis. Um, we, I did some information on what's new, which is the Adirondack Craft Beverage Trail. Um, just maybe people would like to include that in an itinerary for the future. And um, I did a little call out on the FAM tour, which I'll talk about next. Um, we are going to do another FAM tour for September. Um, again, we will be working with um, Saratoga uh, and uh, Destination to New York State. So you can see that we did a little uh, one pager that I used at ABA just to kind of remind people to save the date, September 14th through the 16th. Um, because of the su success of last year's FAM, I do um, anticipate that we surpass our numbers. We had about 57 tour operators last year and we're looking to do maybe about 75. So still we'll have two buses that are circulating around the county. Um, we are going to have a little I Love New York component. Um, we were working with I Love New York to um, assist us with um, bringing some international uh, operators on the FAM. Um, we've been told that they um, will secure at least 14 operators from China, the UK, and Australia for us. So what they'll do is they'll probably um, do a FAM prior, free pre-FAM um, in another area, then they'll do our area, and then a uh, post-FAM, maybe they'll do the Thousand Islands, but we will have those, um, a captive audience for a few days uh, with an international component. Um, we're just starting to work on the itinerary now. We found because ni about 98% of the operators did come in on a, on a Sunday last year, um, we thought it would be um, nice to offer them an official event that evening, so we um, talked to the Steamboat Company and they're going to host a, a nice icebreaker reception and dinner on the lock, um, the sacrament. Um, so that will give a good opportunity for, you know, um, group friendly suppliers to, to meet with the tour operators and mix and mingle and network. Um, as far as the itinerary, we will have them all day, uh, we'll have them on Sunday and then we'll have them all day Monday and Monday evening. Um, so far I've contracted with the Fort William Henry. Um, they are going to offer us a dinner and a reception out on the lawn for Monday night. And then Tuesday will be uh, spent in Saratoga Springs. Uh, we're we're going to do, instead of the track, this year we'll do the reception at Canfield Casino. Um, and again, Destinations in New York State is going to do a travel show down in Saratoga. So any Warren County suppliers that want to exhibit down at the show, we encourage you to, to do that. Um, and just kind of building on some of the successes for last year, uh, from last year. I am working currently with, um, and I'll name the names, Burlington Trailways out of Burlington, Iowa, Tours by Design, Hinkley, New York, Lakeshore Tours out of Bowmanville, Ontario, Groups Galore from uh, Pennsylvania, and Short Trips from Thornhill, Ontario. This is all as a direct result of last year's FAM. So um, looking forward to a, another successful FAM for 2015. Um, next is another FAM opportunity, and this one is through I Love New York. It's uh, the Brand USA Mega FAM, um, and what this is is Brand USA Germany is partnering with I Love New York to bring 80 travel agents on eight routes throughout uh, New York State. Um, so up the update portion will take place um, April 20th through the 26th, um, and I Love New York has asked us um, as a TPA to secure lodging and attractions along their itinerary route. 
um, we have 12 travel agents that will be coming to us, and they're going to utilize Saratoga North Creek Railway, um, and they're going to stay overnight at the Wingate. Thank you. Um, in an effort to uh, emphasize authentic local experiences to the market, which is very important to the international um, uh, tourists, uh, we're, we're going to offer some local products, Oscar Smokehouse, Toad Hill Maple Farm, and Nettle Meadow Goat Cheese Farm as they travel up to Hadley um, on the train. Um, then they're going to meet John Duncan at Sacandaga Outdoor Center in, um, in Hadley and discuss adventure options because that's a, a, a big, um, highly sought out a sought after activity for the international travelers. Um, then they're going to do a tour in Lake Luzerne and their evening will be spent at Adirondack Pub and Brewery with a presentation from the Adirondack Beverage Trail. Um, next we're going to, in the next day we're going to do a tour of Lake George Village and then head to Bolton. So we'll do Adiron Adirondack Extreme Adventure Course where they'll be able to do the zip line if they so choose. Um, and then they are going to go to the Sagamore for lunch and then they're up to Lake Placid. Um, so I look forward to to, um, to working with that group. And again, I always like to thank the partners that you know host complimentary rooms or they offer you know free admissions because that really helps us showcase our area. Um, next, I have some ads that have that have gone out. Um, you can see the one on the left. We had a great turnout for the a full page co-op in the group uh, tour magazine. Ten partners um, total on that one. Um, and then there were some others that I'll actually have um, some uh, Adirondack feature editorial on the Groups Today magazine. Um, I'll show that next month because it hasn't come out yet. Um, and all of these ads all have a digital component to them as well. So um, hopefully we'll get some good leads from those. Um, and lastly, we are working on the meeting and event, um, special event planner that we do. Um, that's always been a hard copy piece that we, that we produce, but we're kind of in the conceptual stage now, re redesigning that to ju just be an online um, resource. Um, and we're going to have some call outs to wedding venues. The LGBT market is uh, very big now. So we're just kind of thinking of ways that we can, you know, change that meeting um, special event guide to meet some of the, the, the emerging trends. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Peter, you're uh, up next. So, uh, last time we met, we were going over uh, a big web overhaul, and uh, a good chunk of that has taken place. And what we have on the screen here is our current website, um, which has been rebuilt, and it is now responsive, so it collapses and expands depending on if you're on a phone, tablet, or desktop. And um, what you have in the middle is phase two of this, what we plan to... what. what LMP is currently working on for us, so we're elaborating on a lot of these things. So what ha is happening is this is a, a Drupal-based website, and Drupal is a content management system. So what they do is they drop in these kind of off-the-shelf shelf modules to allow us to get a basic foundation of what we want. And we like that, we approve it, and now what we're doing is they're going to go back into these modules and custom code them specifically for us. So we turn these three feature boxes into something a little bit more captivating, um, and you know, looking a lot better, hopefully a lot clickable. Um, adding some uh, video into there, uh, elaborating on our events, making it look a lot better. And we've decided um, in the past to really push the top 10 out of tax events. So now that's going to have a, uh, a feature button right on the homepage uh, that'll link to the 10 listed events. Um, we're working with them on establishing uh, view and submit photos. So we have this interaction with our uh, guests that they, they've come here, they've stayed here, they took pictures of fishing, hiking, boating, um, and they provide us those images and we host them and you know, almost like a testimonial, a visual testimonial of we came to Lake George, had a good time, and it is here as proof. Um, reorganizing our feature articles so that they're a little bit more um, friendly for the screen, and then um, elaborating on our, our footer here. This is a persistent thing that follows you on each and every page, and on each and every page here, if I can zoom in a Bit. We're going to have getting here, right? That's an important topic for guests to have. Um, travel from Canada, another way of getting here, but specific to their market. And and, and uh, what's new? Uh, and what's new is a, a page that we're building out right now that'll feature not just uh, a new entity, but if um, Six Flags has a new ride or the, w the water park expands on that, that's something that's new. Uh, you know, a restaurant opens up, that's a new business. So. Things that if you've been here before, check out the new stuff. Um, also with this site, 
We implemented a, a lot better Google Analytics, and we're continuing to do so. And we just recently, uh, mid-February, <coughs> uh, enabled Google Demographics. Uh, this actually uses third-party software to track how old a person is, what they're interested in, gender, uh, things of that nature. So here are the five dimensions that are available, age, um, gender, affinity categories, um, in-market segments, and other categories. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Age and gender are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, affinities would be, um, are they interested in fishing, hiking, things of that nature. Um, and over here, since we've launched, this is just a sample of how the Google dashboard displays um, what you're looking at. So this is just a quick recap of the you know, 15 days that it's been running of um, age ranges for our site. So you'll see that the, a good chunk of orange and green is the 25 to 44 uh, segment, and um, it gets a little bit thinner with purple and yellow, which is your 45 to 64. So we'll keep an eye on those and see how they, they chart year over year and season uh, compared to season. See what we're looking at in summertime versus wintertime, and um, you know, it's another tool to use. Uh, we've also worked with Carl Hellman this year to acquire some 11 of uh, really solid photographs to use throughout our campaigns. These are, you know, pictures are worth a thousand words. I think Carl Hellman's photography is worth even more than that. This guy is great at what he does, and he really captures this area um, in a fantastic way. So we've used some of these ads, um, images and ads that you've seen, pull up displays, um, they, they get used on our website, um, anywhere and everywhere we can use these in conjunction with our copy and tagline, we will do so. As a good example, um, we have these seasonal stickers, these are things, uh, this part of the, the piece of the puzzle that goes out uh, to our travel shows and these things fly off the table, uh, we use it during these four seasons and you know what we're looking to get here is, is um, you know, hopefully they slap these on their fridge or something like that. Or of mind awareness, they're, they're in their house somewhere, maybe in their kid's notebook or something. Um, and we also use his images in our free Optex ads. So these are ads that go in programs, uh, free ads that we're allowed in each program. And how we use it this year is we've selected four images to kind of rotate uh, seasonally. So if it's a winter ad, we'll use the winter scene, spring, fall, um, we'll change them accordingly. Our new tagline that we're, we're, we're straying away from um, four great seasons, uh, outstanding destinations to easy to get to, easy to enjoy, and it kind of mimics this this idea of hey, we're coming from the fast-paced city to a nice placid lake, the quiet Adirondacks, um, Adirondack chair, and peace, relaxation, and we're really hammering home the idea that hey, we're just a few hours drive to a completely different world, uh, completely different experiences, and we, um, as the Warren County Tourism Department are offering great uh, information on lodging, dining, camping events, activities, outdoor recreation, you name it, we have it. We are your official destination to get that kind of information. Uh, we've also been busy with our videographer. This stuff is, um, I haven't met in a while, but this was at the end of last year, 2014. Our videographer went to Gore when we first got a lot of our heavy snowfall and got three days of um, just awesome skiing footage stills from the mountain, and we're talking sunrise and sunset. He was uh, had access to the mountain before the lifts even opened, so he was just up there doing nature uh, footage, and then he had people skiing with him, so um, absolutely awesome photo photography and video that we're using in our upcoming winter stuff. He also went down to West Mountain and caught some of that unique twilight skiing and uh, night skiing with the lights coming on and people coming down the peaks, <coughs> and he also captured um, some outlet shopping especially the new outlets and some, um, you know, crowds of people going in at right around dusk when they were lit up and looking real nice. Um, <coughs> this is some of our old blasts, the last two that went out since we've been together. Uh, on January 7th, we sent this blast to 128,000. It's open by 9,000 people. Uh, just promoting winter things to do. Um, heavy interest in winter, winter carnivals and um, our free 2015 winter brochure. And the blast on the right is uh, the plan ahead blast. Went out to 129,000 and opened by uh, a little over 10,000 people. And uh, real heavy interest in downloading the travel guide. So our travel guide was requested by 13, to download it um, by 1,300 people and actual to receive by mail um, was 500 people. So you know, people are interested in that, that um, that book, they want it, and they want it at their fingertips. 
Um, group tour was also pretty interested. Uh, we have a, seven, a little over 700 people click the download the group tour, and um, our ads, our sponsor ads, started to see a little bit of an uptick, and um, one of them did extremely well, better than usual. Um, that's it from my end. Uh, also, with the website, we. Uh, on top of the home page reiterations that are going on, I, I got to say, IT has done a good job. We're converting our old database that was tied up in a lot of programs, labeling programs, things that have become um, obsolete um, that were kind of weighing down the system. We've done a good job of dropping those and rebuilding our core system to allow us to have a, a solid foundation, you know, database integration collection, uh, to, to really build out our, our website um, in the coming months. So that's supposed to finish up. Jeremy's done a great job getting in there and unknotting a lot of stuff and really finding some core things that need to get fixed and updated. Uh, and he expects to have that work done by the end of March, which coincides with our homepage update. Once those are done, um, LMP and Jeremy and the tourism office will work on really elaborating on lodging properties and the nitty gritty details of the internal site. So um, photo galleries for lodging properties, descriptions, um, neat little icons that go along with what they can see and expect with each place. So. April should be a good month to really get a hands with some good solid foundation stuff. Thank you, Peter. Any uh, questions, Peter? Anybody have a question? Uh, well? Just wanted to mention, and under the heading shameless promotion of one town, the next time uh, you're at Gord taking photographs, you don't have to go to West Mountain. You do have <laughs> night skiing at the ski <laughs> So you can just go over the hill and get some new shots. And then go to one of the bars and have a few drinks and <laughs> stay over and <laughs> start okay. the next day. <laughs> All right, anything Thanks. else? All right, we'll move along. Uh, we got Tom Connors from Ad Workshop. Uh, and Brendan Mallory as well, both from Ad Workshop with us today. Yes, sir. Just, I'm just going to do a quick review of uh, the winter campaign, then go into some of the digital things we're going to be doing this summer or, or coming up. And I think and Brendan's going to explain that. He's our digital expert. Um, these are markets for the winter. We pull in a little bit in the winter. Uh, we're in the whole New York metro market. We go the Capital District right through to Syracuse, and then we concentrate in Montreal for shopping. Our promotional website that we use for this is uh, LakeGeorgeNY.com. It's fully adaptive. It'll go to every screen. 90% of the people came were new visitors, 60% on desktop, 40% on tablet and mobile. Here's the creative that we use on all the digital products throughout the entire markets that we showed. This is, uh, Peter did these for, for the winning overnight stay and for, uh, to run along with the TV ads that, that we're running in these markets. Also in all, in all the uh, U.S. markets, we run a full page takeover. This is the page when you go in to log into your email account. It's a full page and it's there while you're doing that. And we've seen an incredible conversion on this. It's a, it takes over the whole page. It's usually a conversion. You're looking at a single digit, low single digit. This is over 20% conversion on these high impact units. And then up in Montreal, I'm going to change it over a little bit. That's our the broadcast and the, uh, the banner ads that we run in the U.S. markets up in Montreal. We run a whole campaign on uh, YouTube. We do three different things up there now. And I'm going to let Brandon talk about this. He's our digital expert. Okay, so these are paid placements on YouTube. Um, most of you know what YouTube is, but it's um, basically built on the Google search engine. Uh, so what we can do is we can target, our target this time was Montreal, a 35-mile radius. Uh, we were targeting between the ages of 18 and 64, and also targeting to the interests interest listed above, so home and garden, shoppers, savvy parents, uh, and the like. Um, what we did was we ran two different placements. One was a 60-second video, one was a 30-second video. Um, that produced 36,466 views with a cost per view of three cents and a little over 1,100 clicks. Um, these results are outstanding. Usually we see a cost per view of about 10 to 12 cents, so we came in you know, a fourth of that. So we're happy to see that. Um, 
there's not much else to say. This ran November 5th through January 31st. Um, if you guys have further questions about YouTube, I never know how to gauge the sort of knowledge level that people have about digital. Sometimes people know what I'm talking about, sometimes they don't. So I'm always available for, for further discussions if you want to know how YouTube works. So you're on it right now. <laughs> What's that? I said you're on it right now. Are yeah. you willing Cameras to on. get <laughs> Oh. All right. We're tired for <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I got you. I was like, I'm on what? I didn't realize there was a camera. <laughs> okay, so these are the paid uh, Facebook placements. So this is its own platform. It's called Ad Manager. Uh, so we're not actually using Lake George's Facebook page to promote Lake George. We're buying display ads across Facebook proper. Uh, so these are right-hand rail ads. Um, if you've ever been on um, your desktop and you're on Facebook, you'll know there's a news feed which has your friends' pictures of their cats and babies and stuff like that that are somewhat annoying at times. Um, but you'll also notice that there's sponsored posts on the right-hand rail, and those are what we're buying into here. Uh, we do plan on going native, so native advertising is a new buzzword in the industry. Uh, what that aims to do is to place sponsored content, um, for example, about Lake George shopping or what have you, uh, within that sort of news feed posts that are going on. So you might see your friend's cats, and you might see right next to the sponsored post uh, from us. Um, what that does is it's a little bit less intrusive. People find that native advertising sort of irritates users less, and we always aim to do that. Um, so in any event, we will be moving into the native uh, for this coming campaign and for the season. Um, our cost per click here, just to give you some of the top level KPIs is 49 cents, which is great. Uh, for a Facebook pay campaign, anything under a dollar is outstanding. So uh, basically, the higher the interest, the better the sort of uh, response to our campaign will drive that down. So uh, not only is it showing us that we've done our job and done so cost effectively, it also shows us the sort of interest and engagement that we got with the users. Okay, so the trade desk, this is pre-roll. I don't have enough time today to explain programmatic in detail, but essentially it's just the automated buying of ads, sort of like a mini stock exchange in real time through computer software. Um, we've been using it for larger initiatives, but for this we did uh, pre-roll shopping. So what pre-roll is, is anytime you're on the web and you want to watch a video, so you go to ESPN and you're watching a highlight from maybe the Super Bowl, uh, before that, they play that ad, they'll play you what looks like a commercial, right? So there's some sort of messaging. So it comes before, pre, the user-initiated, user-desired content. So um, you can actually buy the same inventory off of YouTube through this programmatic platform, or you can go directly to Google and buy it. So there's two different ways of doing it. Of course, this inventory is not limited to YouTube. It's all over the web anywhere. Um, Brandon, if I can just add something here. Sure. We run about 20 different... Uh, pre-roll campaigns for a client for colleges and other areas, we average about 50% completion, 50 to 55 completion rate. This just shows you the interest in Montreal for factory outlet shopping. 72% completion rate. It's far and above the highest we've seen for anybody running pre-roll. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and we ran, we found that Canadians um, not only do they watch the video for longer and their completion rates are higher, but their click frequency is also greater. So just a tip about Canadians, they love to uh, engage and, and consume that data or those video assets. So we're really excited to continue that. Um, as he was saying, the normal completion rate, the industry average is about 52, so 72% completion is, is amazing. And we're well above the industry average for click-through rate as well. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, so talking about what's coming up, what's new. Um, I don't know who has been, um, some people call it victim, I don't like to use that word, but has anyone ever experienced Amazon sending them an ad after they visited Amazon reminding them to come back? We've seen that. So retargeting, right? Amazon and the other large e-commerce retailers are very great at this. If you go and you put a new book in your cart but you leave without buying it, Whenever you go to another site, they're going to ask you to politely come back and buy that book. <coughs> so we're using the same thing for our clients. Essentially what it does is it places a pixel across the site where we can learn about user behaviors. Um, and then whenever they visit, they get cookied. And that will tip us off to any sort of advertising opportunities wherever they go on the web. So essentially we have a goal. One would be um, travel. our travel pack. right? So we want people to download or to sign up to email this travel pack. So we can follow people around 
if they come and they look at the travel pack but they don't convert, they don't download, they don't sign up, then we can offer them up advertising later to try to get them to come back. Um, the left side is just an infographic about the purchase, what, representing the purchase funnel. Um, so when we talk about YouTube, we're looking at sort of mid, mid funnel. So usually people go to YouTube and they're doing research. They want to see what's up with shopping in Lake George, what's up with you know boat cruises. So that gets us already mid funnel. They already have some interest. Uh, we'll talk about display at another time. We do a lot of display for Lake George. That's sort of a top of the funnel awareness. We're just trying to get the name out there and make people aware of what's going on. Uh, but retargeting, it's bottom funnel. So we already have people who are aware. People have done the research. People are just right there. Uh, but we want to keep bringing them back for more content, more um, information, and hopefully get them to sign up for that travel pack. So that's what's on the horizon. We just brought on a new platform um, that has technology far and above stuff other people are doing right now. So we're excited to see that moving forward. We're excited to be working with Ad Workshop. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, can I ask a question? I just just uh, before I get to Christina, um, I get hit with this a lot from business people. I, I heard it this morning. What all you guys do and Josh and tourism, I mean, to me it's phenomenal what I see because I'm in the over 70 bracket now as of today. Um, it, it's uh, it, it's hard for me to understand, but I think it's working. But I have, get a lot of questions. How do we know it's working? Um, I, I got a question today saying, you know, tourism hasn't increased in five years around here. We keep and we're at a level plane. I mean, how do we know that we are doing the right job, or, or how do we know that the people are coming and from all the stuff we spent a lot of money on advertising and tourism, but it's hard to, um, you know, convince some of the business people in the area that, you know, what we're doing is working. Uh, I mean, I feel most of them are reasonably successful, and it, it's a lot of stuff that comes from us, the tourism committee, you know, all you gentlemen and all your that we work with, but we can't. I can't convince some of the people that it, it is working. What can you help us to to come up with something to to make them understand it is working? Okay, so you know the promise of digital marketing, right, was that it's trackable, and that you can tie some sort of ROI to it, and that was you know leaps and bounds above TV billboards and and things of that nature. Uh, so what we can do, what we sort of translate into value for our clients is going to be the media that they consume on site. So our job is to get them to your site and then they need to take an action. They need to watch videos and they need to download or sign up for travel packs and so on and so forth. Um, so to answer your question, I can do anything you need me to do to try to help these people out, but I think it's going to be a joint effort um, with the committee. I mean, you guys do your studies to ask them how they learn. So we're going to have to tie that back into digital media. We know so much about how they're interacting with your site and we know studies that are sort of broader on, you know, other clients about how that translates into people's travel habits. So um, things like TripAdvisor, they know very well what sort of site analytics, you know, will actually relate to or translate into an ROI for, for a given area or destination. Um, so I guess the, the short answer would be um, it's hard, but I think it's possible, and I think there's going to have to be sort of a larger effort <laughs> on the agency side with buying media and then the results that you guys get from studies and surveys that you take. See, the thing that I have as chairman, and I know I work with Kate and everybody, you know, there's business groups in, in our area that get together by themselves and I won't use the word complain, but try to figure out a way to get business. I mean, I, I wish I can get them here at this meeting. I mean, you know, I, I would love to, because um, everybody kept around, well, why don't you have a night meeting or but I would love, you know, to plan ahead like uh, in April to have, I mean, what we had here today to me is impressive. I mean, and I'm a small business guy. Um, I wish I had the biggie guys here to see that what we're really doing because it always seems like to them on the outside, uh, they're not getting much of what we're doing, you know. But And I feel like the outlets or some of the big hotels, some of the people that are coming there are coming from our part of the advertising uh, aspect of this but we can't convince them that it is. So that's, you know, I, I, I just wish we could, uh, like, not wish, but I uh, would like to see a meeting that we, we plan, like, say, maybe sometime in April, where invite all the, let them know a month ahead or two months ahead that we're going to have a meeting like this. But they're welcome to come, but very little ever show up. So, that's the chair.
John, uh, that's a very good point. I, I think that the, um, it was just a few months ago, I, I think that, um, um, I, th I think it was Dave, Dave uh, Penny was here and, and talked about uh, the, the outlets and, and uh, what an attraction they were. And, and, and here, just a few months later, we're seeing uh, that having been uh, more incorporated, I guess not that it wasn't before, but perhaps more incorporated into uh, what we're doing, and also uh, I think with some of the data validating uh, the interest in that suggestion, uh, and um, and of course his being in that part of the business, uh, he uh, 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 that information he provides is uh, important in terms of validating as well. And I think that um, you're right, not, not everyone can be at a, a committee meeting like this, and maybe what we uh, need to do is uh, regularly, quarterly, whatever, um, send out something asking for a, um, an evaluation of uh, the programs that we're running at any particular point in time so that the, um, those types of ideas uh, can be uh, evaluated and incorporated, and, um, and it also, I think, then puts uh, some of those folks in a position to uh, take a look at what is being done, uh, and, and so that they can comment on it. And so, uh, without being onerous to the staff in terms of surveying, you know, the, the totality of the business community, I think that kind of outreach might be a, might be something that I think is is advisable. And just one other thing before we move on, I just want to thank Kate and staff for providing this this uh, calendar of uh, coordinated activity uh, with the um, with the Lake George Chamber. And, and I think that um, I, that I would ask is, is that perhaps um, periodically, annually, whatever is appropriate, you know, you provide this to us. And, and that way you can see also, for example, where you might see, well, you know, we really are understaffed at this event. We really could use uh, uh, call the chamber because maybe they can partner with us to be able to deliver more, you know, more effort. And um, so I would hope that this would continue. But I think this is a very good tool, not only in terms of reporting to us, uh, but also for the Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. Sorry to Can I speak uh, for a moment on behalf of uh, a larger hotelier? In, in sure. The um, I think when it is. You, where, where are you from? Uh, mm -hmm. So when okay. uh, I think one of the issues is when you're looking at your occupancy for the year is, you know, are we losing uh, a, a bigger increase in occupancy? So, and I see what you're saying. You're seeing these numbers, which are huge. People are clicking on this and they're, they're wanting to come up here. But if you don't see that rise in occupancy, then it's a concern to us. So are we losing more and getting, are, are the, the markets changing? So are we losing a certain segment just to, be able to have this to be able to keep that two percent. If we didn't have this, it, would we be losing more? Would, would that gauge be going down? So that's a question no one asks. You can always see what you're booking, but you can never see what you're not booking unless you want to look for it. You know, again, I'm from New York City, so I have to tell you on that because we we're trained in New York City to look for what you're not getting. Let's let's see what where that gauge is. So we are going up. We feel we'd like to go up higher. I think that's what you're hearing from the hoteliers. When you look at other counties surrounding us, Saratoga, Lake Placid, their percentage of occupancy is going up. If we're 2%, they're at 7 or 8. And there is a big difference there, so that question comes up. That's where that question is. But sitting here tonight, today with you, is, well, what are we losing if we didn't have this? If we didn't have these ads and all these things that everyone here is doing, would we be minus 4%? And that's scary. That's what we have to all look at and get together and, and determine as a um, as a region. You know, what are we doing wrong? So, um, just platform that. I'm just just yeah. thought. Well, I mean, I look at this and I say, what more can can all these outfits and these people do for us to get more? So, I mean, like, and you you just hit it on the head. Are, uh, are we maintaining that two and three percent? Because that's what our area is going to give us. We're not a Saratoga at, at times with a convention center now. We're also a smaller, we're our, our peak periods are two months, so anybody can do anything in July and August. It's that September, October, the fall is. If you have to really go after those months that you know you're, that you're weak, and that's the promo. It's got to go there. Anyone can do anything in July and August. 
And it, it, it depends. I mean, I have a lot of friends that are in my industry in Saratoga, and I, I hang around with a lot of them, and, and they do real well during the midweek this time of year because they have a little small convention center there that's bringing in something every other day, that's three days a week, right. which we don't have. Correct. And that makes us, we can't get over that over 2 or 3% because we don't have what a lot of the, that's my opinion, what a lot of people are looking for. Shopping. Yeah. But even outlet shopping, now we p we see what the report was for the Canadians, but it's still not really packed this time of year. So you know, it it, it just depends. Right. But I, I just wanted to bring that out because that's I keep hearing that from some of the business people now. But uh, yes, what happens if we weren't doing this? Would 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 it go down four percent, five percent, six percent? So I I you know like I say we have a department that works, and I'm not just giving them credit because they're here extremely hard. We have very talented people. Um, Peter, since he's been aboard with this computer stuff, it just mesmerizes me all the time. And and so, but I just don't feel that it's resonating to some of the business people because they don't come to our meetings to see what they're doing. All they do is say, oh, we're not doing this and we're not getting the business we should get. And it's tough for us to keep working at something that but doesn't seem like it's getting there. Grow it. So that it's, it's, everything's a double-edged sword because we don't really know what we're losing unless we really looked into it. Okay, and, and, and there are ways you can do it, but it's complex. And that's another thing. But we want we, we don't feel that we're increasing as much as we should. So that's where the problem becomes. And you know what can we do to increase occupancy? And, and, and that's the big issue that I think we're looking at as well. So when, when you hear that when you hear that rumble, that's what you're hearing. Yes, I saw a hint. Yes. One thing just to Gosh. elaborate on that. <coughs> so there's a couple things to look at. If these gentlemen were representing a <coughs> shoe company or a widget company where they run a campaign, a uh, user sees that campaign, goes to that site, completes a purchase, buys a shoe, buys a widget, whatever, you know that they bought that product. Well, we operate a little bit differently in that we're almost like an awareness campaign because they can't book through us. So there's no end completion. They can come and get the information from us, they can get the travel guides, they can click on events, but that doesn't guarantee that they came to the event, that doesn't guarantee that they booked um, a lodging room. So it's, it's tough to measure that. Our stats do say that our lodge, we, we attract a lot of people to our site, and our top page view is lodging. So uh, just some common sense assumptions would say that if people are taking the time to come to our site, uh, request our travel guide, uh, peruse the site, enter a contest, and a good chunk of them, the majority of them, are going to the lodging page, I would say that assumption. A lot of them are probably following up. Uh, certainly, they can't go through the whole process with us. They're following up with you or another lodging property to book a room. What we are working on uh, currently with this whole IT stuff and the foundation that we built, and <coughs> it was um, partially your idea from our last meeting, is um, establishing a link, a, a completion link, where uh, the user comes to our site from our ads and our awareness campaigns, and they cruise our site and find what they want. And then when they get to the lodging, instead of just having uh, a list of lodging properties that you can kind of sort through, read, and interact with, uh, an actual clickable link that says, hey, I like this property. I want to go to that property right now. Um, and not just in a way that they go to your website and then have to find your booking and, and you know, that's tough to do because if I go to your site as a user, I'm not going to find the booking in the right-hand corner. I go to another site, it's going to be, they're going to be hidden on each page. So what we're doing is we're, we're making it a way that is consistent. So if someone clicks, I want to hear from your property. Um, that's an active engagement that we can probably measure, and we have tangible evidence that they clicked this, they went through all the stuff, and they said, I want to hear from you. And that's about as far as the county can go. But I think it's a good measuring tool to say, all right, this person followed up with you, you, and you. Um, is there a method to track that further? Possibly. But what we need to do is get this up and running, which we're working diligently on. And I think it's going to be a real neat asset to, um, you know, it's not going to be perfect at first. But we're going to see how it goes and how it works and how we can kind of manage that a little bit better to, uh, to facilitate that last thing, that, that look, if this person is interested in coming here and they've even clicked this button to say, I want to stay at this place, um, did that property convert that person? Um, and that, I think, will give us a lot more better metric of, um, you know, we have all this awareness and where is it actually funding, funneling these uh, just uh, let me get Josh. Josh, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to add one note. Mm -hmm. Through the years I've been involved in just um, probably at this point hundreds of meetings at the county level, one of the questions that I'll be asked a lot of times by um, sometimes legislators or different people like that is they'll say, well,
well, yeah. aren't people coming anyway? You know, aren't, aren't people traveling anyway? And I'll kind of smirk and say, yeah, they're all going to vote in November, too. But we campaign for a reason, right? We campaign because of exactly what um, you touched on, Peter, which was awareness. And, and they, I see that at the front line. When I talk, because I, when I said I talk to about 10,000 people a year, I legitimately talk to about 10,000 people a year. And there's two things that Lake George competes with. Lake George competes with other destinations. But the biggest thing that people are competing with right now in the tourism space is indifference. That there has been a lot of just not doing anything. And that's where a power of the brand rises up, is that all of the tourism marketing from a destination standpoint lays the irrigation pipeline, but then the businesses have to then step up and create a value statement to tap into that irrigation pipeline. So what I have always wanted is that we see all this tremendous advertising around political we get the announcement of the winner, right? The real tracking of the winner has to happen at the vote of the win, which is the reservation. So tracking is a partnership of being able to have people build in the systems, both on their websites and with their staff and with their own surveys of where are you hearing um, about us. And I, I have, I do a lot of consulting, and I had a client that took their window tag that they gave everyone for the, you know, um, you're here to be and they put a little survey on the back. And that survey has just, you know, just had constant rewards because they have all of their marketing on there, all of their media, lots of different questions. So the overriding point is that um, the destination marketing, you know, challenge essentially is to establish a brand that then individual destinations can leverage and tap into, but then the real weight of that tracking often has to come where the vote is. Ms. Conover, yeah, but I think we'll move even on. at this stage, there are some it, 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 there are some fair um, measures of uh, where we might be at. For example, uh, the Lake George Chamber has a website; they're retooling their website. Uh, Bolton has a website as well. Um, I wonder how many um, uh, uh, hits migrate from our website that may get a quarter of a million visitors a year. Uh, something in that order of magnitude, depending on what it is that we have out there, <coughs> migrate from our site to that site, because for that very reason, they're now looking to make the retail connection, right? Whatever that retail connection might be, uh, and, um, and if, if, if not being serviced with a retail connection at our site, it doesn't have to be a, ho a hotel or motel, it could be um, at Adirondack Adventure, it could be w whatever. Uh, and now they th th they need to go to you know that um, although we do all have a, 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 a connection where we offer packages and we have things like that that, that that come onto our site, but I think that kind of thinking, that kind of thinking to connect what we do to the actual making the retail sale, whether it be in the hotel, motel, or wherever it might be, or the outlet, or wherever it might be, that that I think is is uh, is where you want to be. I mean, I think. After all, that's what this is all about. So, um, you know, I think that's that that's where that's where the thought needs to be uh, on our end uh, to be able to, uh, especially now that a lot of these sites are being retooled, chambers sites being retooled. I know the Bolton site's been recently uh, 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 tooled up as well, and and now those sites don't represent the entire business community in their particular region, but they do represent, I think, the a lion's share of, of business community in, in, in their region, whether it be restaurants or hotels or whatever. And uh, so I think that kind of thinking in terms of what measures do help guide our decision making in that regard that is, 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 is where I think we should be. And I think that's, that was where the suggestion lay, I think, as well, is how do we know? Um, that would be come to my mind. I would want to know how many people leave in our site and go on Lake George site because they want to book your motel because they're coming uh, or they're thinking of coming that <coughs> and I don't know if we're able to in the future in the short future because we just approved the email blast software <coughs> as I was saying I can tell right now I can tell clicks and interest so uh, Queen Phillips ran an ad in our last lap they had 177 clicks I can't tell who those 177 clicks are but I know that they had that many people click it and 
go to there for, the, for their offer. I'd assume that some of them booked a room or are working on booking a room or are interested in the offer. Uh, with this new Blast software, I'll be able to tell them Ron Conover clicked at Clean Phillips Cat. We have Ron Conover's email address and Ron Conover went there. Um, we could m uh, possibly s sync up some sort of database with Clean Phillips Campground and say, hey, did our Conover at Gmail book a room with you? Um, and maybe we can attribute that this way. So, so I think with, with, with the direction we're going, we can start refining these stats to be a little bit better and give you more targeting. But I think that as a awareness campaign with these blasts, if we're sending clicks to these properties, um, and maybe it's one person clicking all three properties and seeing what has the best deal for them, and <laughs> we have three clicks, but one conversion, um, <coughs> three clicks and those things. But I think we can start getting a little bit more uh, detailed with uh, what's going on. And more savvy well, I think that I think the point is that kind of data is uh, irrefutable. I mean, in other words, when, when I think it's important that we have that data, is what I'm saying, because I think that's the kind of thing that uh, answers some questions very quickly. Well, yeah, you, you have a problem with privacy. She doesn't want to give away all her clients and open them up for everybody else. But try to win away from concern about privacy, uh, confidentiality of data. Would you do that? I mean, every time somebody comes in, would, would you, at, at your computer, run them run them through a list to see if if they checked in the Warren County site? Very um, uh, personal up here and, and private. And I sit down and say, the city or city head, but in the city we all work together. And people, I know people that say, hey, I'm going to the Hampton next week, and, or I'm going to the country, I couldn't get you. We're booked, we recommend each other. I mean, that openness of, um, of opening ourselves up to each other. We all want business to come to Lake George. Okay, we well, want to I, I would think that would be the easiest way. I mean, uh, well, even if you, I mean, you have a list of people that. Well, just off the cuff, that was kind of an idea. Oh, you're <laughs> you're right, you're that, but you know, even thirty okay. seconds later, retooling that, perhaps we don't rely on them to cross-reference our database. We have Ron Conover's email, and he was interested in, in this ad. Could we potentially send an email saying, "Hey, to the people that click, click these sponsored ads, or the people that click lodging property in these blasts, hey, did you ever, uh, did you ever stay in Lake Erie? We'd love to hear about your trip. Or your trip." And we know that we've got their names from the database. These are people that already agreed to hear from us, uh, want to hear from us. Now we're just following them up. And we can position it in a way, you know, this needs to be thought out a lot more. But we can position it in a way of, um, okay, we're just looking to see That's a lot a, better. Did you have a good idea? Did you have a good time up here? What did you do up here? Uh, what did you do? Are you going to come back? So I think with some, once we get the software in place and we see how it works and what we can do with it and kind of expand upon the capabilities, we'll start getting some more detailed metrics. All right, well, great conversation, and I think this is what we got to talk about. But I got we got Christina here. Let her finish out so we can come to an end on this meeting today. Well, I'll kind of piggyback on what's been said. I'm going to the other side of tourism, and I'm trying to find meetings with special events and groups. I have a bigger budget this year. I'm going to new shows. I'm going to meetings fest. I'm going to fall market meetings. I'm going to collaborate. I'm going to connect. Those are all meetings that are association and business. Hopefully, I'll be coming home with leads from these shows. I've never been to any of these shows, so I don't I don't know what to expect. But I know Saratoga goes to these shows. I know somebody from Rochester, Syracuse, Buffalo. So I know they have value to some of the places in New York State. Um, I'm going to a couple regional shows, which um, are people that work in the New England and New York State, New Jersey area. So they're aware of Lake Placid. They're aware of Saratoga. Our and this is my opinion as well, one of our problems is that we do not have a convention center. And if they're looking for a place to come, we don't have a place that's as big as the city center that has the same amount and meeting space and, and the total number of guest rooms because they have a Hilton Hotel that's connected and they have five hotels within walking distance. So we don't have necessarily all of those things, but I'm trying to work with the tools that I have to work with to be able to get Amber in business during the week, in November, in October, in April, in May. One of the other issues is if you're looking at Lake George, not all the businesses are open. Sometimes that, you know, people don't want to come because there's no businesses open. What's the point? You can't drive to, you know, down to the village to get a bite to eat. We've got to go to Queen's Ferry. We've got to go to Guns Falls. It's not a big trip, but to some people it is. They want to be walking distance. 
so that's kind of my end of things and where I'm trying to create and get more business. Um, having worked in Saratoga for so many years, I, I know the businesses they work with and I know what they can do. So that is an advantage for me because I know I can't necessarily go after some of the same pieces of business because it's not going to fit there. Um, so I have that advantage. Um, but <laughs> well, the biggest disadvantage you have, and I hear from guests, whether it's a meeting guest or a transient guest, and they come any time from October 15th to April 15th, is that the town isn't open unless it's, you know, Winterfest. And that's huge. You can't have a meeting. Uh, the worst thing this town can do is have meetings come in here and then have them leave and go, are you kidding me? And that would that would send you on a downward spiral. So this upward spiral has got to be little baby steps to understand that that is one of your biggest problems is this town closes down. Now I have to actually send people go to the light and make a left. So it might start to the right. Yes, it is, but you can't go there because it's closed. So you need to make a, a left and go either to the outlet stores or to Glen Falls for dining. And that's huge. Um, just to kind of touch on a couple things from my report, you can mm -hmm. see that I do <laughs> um, I actually have been working on a piece of business for over a, a year or, or a little more than that, the Northeast Campus Stores, which you see on the first page here. Um, they have finally decided to book with the Sagamore because of the size of the event, but it's in November. So we are seeing a little bit of, of the shoulder season. Um, there's another event in here, um, it might be on the second page. Um, it's actually an association that I belong to, SA. Um, they last year booked their meeting in April, the beginning of April. Um, it was at the Holiday Inn. It went well, but some people complained that there were no restaurants open. There weren't the restaurants they wanted to go to weren't open. Um, they listened to them, but they have booked again in April, and this year they're going to be at a different hotel. They're at the Fort William Henry. Um, because I belong to that association and I know they do a lot, have a lot of the associations that are a part of it that do business up here, I am sponsoring one of their um, sessions. I actually became a platinum key sponsor for SA, so my name can be out, but not my name personally, but the Lake George Regional Chamber and CBB can be out there on their website for in the forefront with Saratoga um, to be in their advertising and in their name. So these are the things that I'm doing to try and get the shoulder season business. Um, it is hard, though, because everybody wants to be here in July and August and they want a $99 room rate. They're not going to get that. Um, but if, as you go through my report, you will see there are, there are pieces of business that I've been working on that are for those off times. So I'm just hoping within the next year, <laughs> year um, we can start to see a little bit of a difference on the weekdays. Um, two other things that aren't in the report, the, um, the Chamber is working on retooling their website. I will have a better CBD page. Um, we are also working on the um, festival space website, which should be, we should have something up at the beginning of April. Um, and then the other thing was just yesterday, if you didn't receive an email blast, I can send it to you, but the email blast went out that the, um, the TV show, Frank and Mike from the um, American Pickers, they're going to be coming to the Lake George area. Um, they're going to start filming next month. They're looking for leads. So if you or anybody you know um, has a collection of antique motorcycles, bikes, vintage clothing, um, whatever old artifact that you think might be garbage, might be not somebody else. So let, let them know because they are going to be here filming next month. All right, well, we'll, we'll get down to uh, open to the floor. I think I saw a hand. Yes, sir. Hi, Fred Austin uh, for M. Henry Best Western and the new tourism association that's been started by the hoteliers. Uh, there is a plethora of information out there on the Smith Travel Reports. It is huge. Every franchise hotel belongs. You have to. You have to give them. Every franchise hotel knows exactly where they stand personally in what they call the competitive set. And that is the big guy, really big guys, the medium-sized guys, and the little guys. Uh, 
and you track that information and dig it out, and it's not easily done. And an example I have heard from a number of the hoteliers, they say, oh, the business is great, rev power is up. The revenue, revenue for available unit is up. And they will say, here's why. We are marketing, we are investing, we are giving a better product, we're charging more. And that's true, all of it. The fact is, if you go to, uh, uh, okay, uh, if you go to uh, occupancy, basically it has been flat in Warren County for the last 10 years. More people aren't coming. But rough power is up, so everything's great. Well, it truly isn't. Uh, we've got information here. Uh, occupancy uh, in the last, from 2008 to 2013 in Warren County was down 2.7%. Uh, occupancy tax collected was up 1.4%. Uh, average daily rate was up 7%. So, but the tourism people aren't coming anymore. So the point was very well taken that uh, wh what can we do to get more people here? Uh, and we'll have that pulled together uh, hopefully very, very soon. Some preliminary stuff is already done. And uh, we'll share, we'd like to share it with everybody because it's extremely enlightening. Uh, so, yeah, when it was said, we, what, are the people leaving and the same new people coming or what? No, it's not more people. It's 2.7% less. Thank you. All right, any other comments? Uh, <coughs> I just, Fred, I want to point out, you probably already aware of this, but that window. 2008 to 2013 encompassed the worst economic right. downturn for this country since the Great Depression. So, uh, yes. I don't know, how does this compare to other areas? Uh, we compare it. The easy way to do it, we compare it to Saratoga and to Essex County. They are up. I don't have the numbers. There. They're up. At, well, they'll be up five to eight percent, and we'll be flat. Also, just uh, is that, uh, that uh, the interest that they will see the data is uh, also maybe facility by facility because you might find that overall the data uh, uh, get quite a diverse group of, uh, of uh, facilities from uh, your facility in the Sagamore to uh, uh, a very small facility. And the Sagamore does not subscribe, nor does uh, Six Flags. Well, that would be nice to, uh, to know. Uh, it would be nice to know that. All right. Any other comments? Uh, anything else? Good. Motion to adjourn. We're adjourned. <laughs> so you. Uh, um,